Hey, ladies. And he goes, are you on? Have you looked for me? There's bless her. She's so pretty. How is everybody? I got Vinci Lahu and Jackie's in the house, and Mr. Pebbles is here. <sighs> Y'all, this book is so hot. You just you gotta go get it. <sighs> mm, 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 mm. Um. I'm reading Savage Heat, The Royal Bastards MC by K.L. Ramsey tonight. And. Okay. And so, um, you know, she is. And it's, it's only, it's a short book. It's only 96 pages, I think is what it said. And. I didn't know this, but it's reverse harem. And it only takes place two hours from here. So my accent, I can just I can just get into it, girls. I lived an hour from here once upon a time. I mean, for 10 years. I know how these people are gonna talk. So I got this one covered tonight. Don't we know it? Her man should thank us. My man. My man don't need to thank me. <laughs> don't do anything for Um, Who else is on here? I know what I am. And. Oh, the cover model is. Um, I'll be. Oh, crap. I always forget his name until I see it. Alfie Gordelia, Gordelia, when I was in Nashville last summer, I got my picture made with him. He's about 10 foot tall. He's kind of skinny, though. I like him. He's, he's muscular, but he's a little skinny. I mean, like, I could wrap my arms all the way around him. Yeah. I like my men a little beefier. Even if it's got a little fat on the side, that's okay. This one, he's he's hot. Oh my gosh, his head was bald. He let me rub his head. I was so excited. Yeah, yeah. I like my men a little beefier too. And like I said, even a little fat on the side's okay. I gotta have something to hold on to. But I mean, he. <laughs> Turned out a night with him, but he's uh his other half was standing there and she was I could probably took her though. I'm pretty sure I could have. Alrighty, are we ready to get started? It's gonna be a kind of a short read tonight, and though it's it's gonna be about a 30, 40 minute read because um you know, if I'm making funny faces tonight, my stomach is freaking killing me and I just eat sloppy joes. So I'm probably gonna be dying by the time this is over with, but that's okay. I go, I found out today, I go next Wednesday to talk to the surgeon. Ugh. So, maybe I get that thing took out pretty soon without catching any cooties. So, all right, let's get started. And Nina can join us when she joins us. I don't know. But all righty. So, Savage Heat. Uh, Mr. KL got this for KL's. Christmas present or birthday something. I haven't seen her, Nina, but, you know, she's, when it comes to the stuff, she doesn't normally show up. She may pop in and say hi, and then again, she may not, because she don't like hearing me read them, so. And if I'm, if I'm sounding kind of twangy tonight, I'm doing it on purpose, because I'm getting in, I'm getting in my mojo here. I'm getting in my mode. Going back to my married days when I was when I was married and I had to talk like a country girl, you know. 
So um, it takes place in Huntsville, Alabama. And Huntsville, Alabama is known for rocket scientists. I swear to God it is. It is known for rocket scientists. NASA has a place there or somebody has a place there. And it's called the Huntsville Space Center. We used to go there all the time on field trips. I don't know how many times I've been there. But um, it's also, it's also, it, we in the book world also know that um, Huntsville, Alabama is where Golden Zermax from, uh, you know, Furious Photog. Yeah, he's from there too. Nana, you need to talk to Brian. He's disturbing me. All righty. So, I was practicing with Nina some uh, one of my voices tonight. So, um, oh, and another thing this does is it gives you the whole list. Uh, you guys can just barely sit here. This whole list of Royal Bastards MC series. I got to start going down the list because I've done read a few of them, you know. Okay, so. The Royal Bastards Code. And Nina's, Nina's decided I need to, to, to read this in Savage's voice, okay? <clears throat> Protect. The club and your brothers come before anything else and must be protected at all costs. Club is family. Respect. Earn it and give it. Respect club law. Respect the patch. Respect your brothers. Disrespect a member and there will be hell to pay. Honor. Being patched in is an honor, not a right. Your colors are sacred, not to be left alone. And never let them touch the ground. Old ladies. Now, you didn't hear a D on that one. Old ladies, never disrespect a member's or brother's old lady, period. Church is mandatory. Hey, Brian. Loyalty takes precedence over all, including well-being. <clears throat> Honesty. Never lie, cheat, or steal from another member of the club. You can hear my twang in that lie, never lie. Territory. You are to respect your brother's property and follow the chapters, their chapter's club rules. Trust. Years to earn it, seconds to lose it. Never ride off. Brothers, do not abandon their family. <clears throat> Come on. All right. So, for those of you that don't remember, Kay, uh, Kelly, I'm, I'm going to call her Kelly because that's her name. Um, I don't know how many people know that, but the work we do now because I keep going back and forth. Kelly um, writes point of views. So she doesn't do chapters. She writes for point of view. So the first point of view is going to be Savage, which is the voice I was just in. And the dude on the front. <clears throat> Savage, uh, Savage watched his latest failure as his latest failure floated down from the atmosphere back to Earth. At least this time, the damn parachute deployed and he wouldn't have to start from scratch again to rebuild his rocket. Last time that happened, his boss threw a major fit, telling him to get his shit and clear out of his office. A short week later, his boss was standing on Savage's front porch, proverbial hat in hand, begging him to come back to work. He even gave him some bullshit about the government needing his service and all that shit. Savage didn't have the desire to tell his boss 
that he had not only served his government for almost 20 years, but he had also the bullet hose and shrapnel in his leg to prove it. Sure, he could sit around and explain about his past and waking up every day in pain, but where would that get him? It was his choice to join the Air Force, and it was his choice to re-up when he did, when. Sorry, that was on. It was bothering me. It was changing colors. Um, sure, he could sit around and complain about his past and waking up every day in pain, but where would that get him? It was his choice to join the Air Force, and it was his choice to re-up when he could have gotten out. He saw active combat for the third time, and that was when his copter went down and most of his buddies died. There was nothing he could have done differently the day that day, but God, it was just about all he could think about every night when he laid down and tried to sleep. Their faces would flicker through his memories, and he knew that he was going to have to have another restless night ahead. It was who he had become since he was honorably discharged. Of course, the Army was quick to jump on his specific skill set and make him the best fucking job offer he'd ever gotten. How could he refuse, and why would he? He got to stay in Huntsville, Alabama, where his kid could stay in the same school with the only friends she had ever known. Uprooting Chloe wasn't part of his plan. The poor kid hadn't had much stability in her life. Chloe wasn't really his kid, but that wasn't something he liked to think about too often. It brought him up. It brought up too many bad memories, and he tried to only look forward, never back. Savage adopted Chloe when she was just six months old after her mother and father died in a horrible auto accident. She was his niece, and when child services showed up and at his doorstep with a baby in tow, claiming that his estranged sister had given him full custody in her will. What was he supposed to do? Savage had Savage didn't have one fucking idea how to take care of a kid, and they were handling him, and they were handing him one that still needed 24-7 care. He quickly learned how to change a diaper and what to feed and not feed a six-month-old. Honestly, the last part was learned the hard way because the kid ended up not being able to ha handle table food at such an early age. Everything he fed her seemed to run through her like sand in a sieve, but that was all behind him now. He wasn't sure how he would have survived without this, without that little girl. She had become his whole reason for living. Hell, she basically saved his life and gave him purpose and the will to keep going on, going after his accident. He had only been home for a few months when Chloe came into his life and he was feeling pretty down and sorry for himself. Both of his parents were gone. His father was never really in the picture and his mom died the year he graduated from high school. Her death had sent him into a spiral that led to him joining the Air Force after he graduated. It also was one of the reasons his older sister, Cherry, stopped talking to him. She begged him not to go into the military even tried to guilt him into feeling bad about leaving her with no one since both of their parents were gone, but he didn't listen. Hell, the only thing Savage wanted to do was ride his damn motorcycle and get the fuck out of that town. He was a punk ass kid who didn't know any better. And the day he left to enlist was the last time he saw Cherry alive. Now, every time he looked at Chloe's sweet face, he saw his sister. He never met Chloe's dad but he had heard that his sister met a good guy and got married. He liked to imagine Cherry happy with her beautiful new family, at least for a little while. She deserved some happiness after all the, sh all the shit life had thrown at her, including a punk-ass 18-year-old kid brother who thought he knew better than she did. God, was he wrong. His relationship with Cherry was the one thing he regretted in life, but Savage learned that regrets would only hold him back and he couldn't allow that. He had too much going for him to wallow in self-pity. I think, all right, let me get this one right. I think, I think a rocket's, I think a rocket's a dud. 
Savage turned to find the hot guy who had all who always seemed to follow him around Redstone Arsenal. It was as if the guy was his personal bodyguard. Should I go deeper with? I mean, I don't think I'm gonna go as deep with Bowie. I think I'm gonna go higher up. I think your rocket's a dud, Savage. Savage turned to find the guy who always seemed to follow him around Redstone Arsenal. It was as if the guy was his personal bodyguard with the only with the way he watched Savage, and he had to admit he wouldn't mind having his body guarded by him. Yeah, well, this is literally rocket science, so I can't really use that old line. Savage looked the guy up and down, liking the way he filled out his fatigues. Not having to wear a uniform was one of the many perks of no longer being enlisted. He usually wore radio jeans and a t-shirt when he was on base, partially out of defiance, but mostly for comfort. The Alabama heat was quite unbearable, but he was used to it. He never really lived anywhere else with the exception of being stationed overseas. I'm Bowie Wolf, the guy said, holding out his hand, waiting for Savage to take it. He shook the younger guy's hand and smiled. Are you named after the singer? Savage questioned. Yeah. He breathed. My mother was a huge fan, and well, I got stuck with the name. Savage shrugged. All in all, I'd say you did all right. David Bowie is a legend. Is a legend, man. Let me read that one again. All in all, I'd say you did all right. David Bowie is a legend, man. He said. Bowie groaned and laughed. Yeah, now you just sound like now. Yeah, now you sound. You just sound like my mother, he teased. Thanks for that, <laughs> He Savage grumbled. He knew just by looking at the guy that he had a few years on him. Hell, he had more than a few years, but that usually didn't bother him. Savage liked his guys young and feisty. Sorry, man. Um, I didn't catch your name, Bowie said. Savage, he offered. Wow, you gave me shit about my name, but yours is pretty epic, too. How did you get a name like Savage? Boy crossed his arms over his massive chest and waited for him, waited him out. It wasn't something Savage liked to talk about, but the der determination on the guy's face told him he really had no choice in the matter. Savage is actually my last name. My first name is Logan, but my club gave me the nickname after I told them about my helicopter going down. Lost a lot of good guys that day, and my buddies and I said I'm still alive because I'm too savage to die. You served, Bowie asked. Yeah, career Air Force until the accident, and then honorably discharged, Savage admitted. How about you? Boy held his arms wide as if showing Savage his fatigues to prove his point. I enlisted in the Army right after high school and haven't left yet. I've been in for 12 years now, and I hope to make this my career, but we'll see. Savage did the math in his head and whistled. So you're what, about 30, he questioned. I'll be 31 in a month, in a few months, Bowie admitted. You're just a kid, Savage teased. <laughs> yeah, okay, old man. Boy said, Savage knew the guy was teasing, but at 45, he was really beginning to feel his age. And how old are you? Savage went, Savage winced at the mention of his name. It was of his age. It was something he usually didn't share because it wasn't anyone's damn business. Um, ladies, am I doing okay on these voices? Swapping back and forth with the, with the two is, I'm having to stop and think. I apologize. Savage smiled at Bowie, trying to deflect his question with one of his own. Want to have a couple of beers with me? Savage knew he was pushing his luck with the younger guy, but he didn't give a shit. He was hot, tired, and Bowie turned him the fuck on. It was time to knock off, and if Savage could convince him to have a couple of beers, then he might be able to talk Bowie into coming home with him for the night. If he was reading the signals correctly, he, his new friend was interested, but he did. He had been wrong in the past, so who knew? 
You asking me out, Savage? Bowie questioned. Now it was Savage's turn to waver in his answer, and he suddenly worried that he had misread the chemistry that hummed through the, their, through the air between the two of them. Savage shrugged. Maybe I am, he said, not really answering Bowie's question. The guy was as stoic as they came, and Savage was trying to read him, but he wasn't having any luck. Listen. If I've misread the situation, then just forget I ask, Savage grumbled. He picked up the last part of his rocket that landed a few hundred feet away from where he had parked, and by the time he turned around and headed back to his pickup truck, he found Bowie leaning up against the passenger side door, his hands shoved deep into his pockets. I'm in, Bowie said, flashing him a wolfish grin. Sounds good, Savage said. He was trying for nonchalant, but his tone sounded anything but. It had been a damn long time since he met a man who made his cock pay attention. But Bowie didn't did that for him. Savage needed to get himself under control or he'd blow his whole cool guy routine. Hell, he was far from being cool, but Bowie seemed interested and he wasn't about to do anything to fuck that up. You have some place in mind, Bowie asked, helping Savage shove the last of his equipment into the back of his pickup truck. I mean, do you have a place you usually go to, you know, for a few beers? Savage liked the way Bowie seemed just as flustered about their situation as he was. He found it kind of cute the, the way the guy was floundering for words. He could have helped him out, but giving him a hard time felt like a better option and would be a lot more fun. You mean like a gay bar? Savage asked. He knew he was adding fuel to the fire, but he didn't care. Bowie turned an adorable shade of red that ran down his sexy neck and had Savage wanting to see just how far down that blush, his blush went. Well, I mean, sure. Or any bar for that matter. It doesn't matter to me, Bowie stuttered. Savage reached out and put his hand on Bowie's arm. I'm just messing with you, he said. I don't know how I don't know of too many gay bars in Huntsville. I usually just go to my own bar, but I don't really advertise that I'm gay and I don't feel like answering questions tonight. You mind just going to the voodoo lounge? It's a bit yuppie, but I think we can blend in with the regular crowd. Plus, they've got great live music a few nights of the week. Wait, you have a bar? Bowie asked. Savage smiled and nodded. Yep, the bar is called Savage Hill. It's also where my motorcycle club meets. We're a part of the Royal Bastards, which is a nationwide MC, but my, my little chapter calls themselves Savage Hill after the bar. I try to keep my personal and private lives separate. Meaning you haven't shared that you're gay with your club, but we guessed. Savage wasn't sure what to say to Bowie's assessment. On one, on the one hand, he felt the need to set him straight, and on the other, he wasn't telling him it wasn't anyone's business who was having who he was having sex with. From the way his body was responding to Bowie, he hoped to have sex with him before the end of the night. Listen, Nina. Listen, Savage said. I learned a long time ago that who I'm fucking is no one's business. I like you. Boy, but if you're not interested, tell me now if I'm wasting my time. I was just talking, man, Boy said. Savage said, yeah, I'm just on edge lately with these damn tests needing to be done yesterday, and I'm being an ass. Sorry. And to answer your question, I haven't told my club that I'm by. Hell, he hadn't told many people about that part of his life. Savage was careful not to bring any of the men or women he slept with home to meet Chloe. He didn't want to expose his daughter to his unstable dating life, and that was exactly what it was. Chaotic. Thank you, Miss Pebbles. Thank you, Nancy. I knew you two would help me out here. <laughs> you like that, do you? <laughs> he hadn't been much of a serial dater, usually not making it past one night with a person. It was easier that way. He didn't have to make any promises to anyone, and he didn't expect anything in return. The one time he broke his no dating rule, he was ended up 
running away like a fucking coward when messy feelings got in the way. So we doing this, Savage asked. He started for the driver's side of his pickup, not waiting to see if Bowie was going to join him or not. I get it, Bowie said. I don't share that part of my life easily. I haven't even come out of, to my family yet. Bowie slipped into the passenger side of the cab of the truck and pulled the seatbelt on, clicking in place. What about your truck? Savage said, nodding to where Bowie's vehicle sat just down the road. I'll get it tomorrow when I'm back on duty. That is, if you don't mind giving me a lift to my place later. Bowie seemed to assume Savage would just agree, and honestly, he didn't mind. If he was Bowie's ride for the night, there was a better chance they'd end up in Bowie's bed for a little for a little while. Savage never left Chloe overnight, but he had a sitter with her, and he knew that she'd agree to a few extra hours if he paid double. Sure, no problem. Thanks, Bowie said. I have to admit, I could use a night out. It's been a shit show around base, and I could use the break. Yeah, I heard about the cutbacks, and I guess being down so many people makes for more work. Makes for more work for the ones who are left. Savage knew some other guys on base from his club, and they were complaining about the changes to the. Oh, thank God. Oh, my stomach. Mm. Sorry, y'all. I'm dying here. Um, Savage, let's see. Savage knew some other guys on base from his club, and they were all complaining about the changes to the budget and having to take on more hours for the same pay. His MC was made up of mostly military guys, but active and retired. But his guys came from all walks of life, and he even had a few one percenters who was happy to help get their lives straightened out. He liked helping his guys and even took a few few of them under his wing as a sort of personal project. Yeah, it sucks, but what am I going to do? Uncle Sam owns me and I go where he tells me, Bowie said. Lord, he better be. Where are you originally from, Savage asked. He usually didn't get too chatty with his dates, but there was something about Bowie that made him want to know more about the guy. Thank God. I wasn't reading him wrong. Too wrong. I'm a little off, but it's all right. Vince is going to like this. Texas. <laughs> Texas, Bowie said. You get homesick? Savage question. Nah. Like I said, I still haven't come come out to my family and keeping a secret like that weighs on a person. It's easy being away from home and not having to worry about watching my back or saying the wrong thing. I get that. I haven't exactly been forthcoming about my sexuality with my friends or family either. He had a few close buddies in his club that knew the truth and he trusted them not only with his secret, but his life. I'd like to blame my military background for all the secrecy, but that really isn't an issue anymore, Bowie said. Yeah. I forgot to. <laughs> yeah, my family was from here, but they're all gone now. <laughs> my dad and his girlfriend got power back on today. Uh, the tornado hit right down in their neighborhood. Didn't didn't destroy their house, but they were out power and waters were flooding the, the roadways. So she was just telling me, girl, there's nothing like a hot shower. I just want to make sure that I do that beep and I didn't want to make sure it wasn't anything important. Um... <laughs> I'd like to blame I'd like to blame my military background for all the secrecy, but that re really isn't an issue anymore. Bowie said, "Yeah, that wasn't the case when I enlisted." Savage had served under the "Don't Ask, Don't Tell" era, and he had to admit it was it, it had its pros and cons. Not having people diving too deep into his personal life was always a plus. He valued his privacy over everything else. You originally from you originally from Huntsville? Bowie asked. Yeah, Savage said. My family was from here, but they're all gone now. Well, except for Chloe and me. 
Savage mainly kicked himself for talking about his daughter. It wasn't something he did with complete strangers, and he was starting to worry that asking Bowie out might have been a bad choice. Sure, the guy was the sexiest man he had seen in a damn long time, but he was completely blowing his rules out the fucking window with Bowie, and that usually didn't end well for him. Who's Chloe? Bowie asked as if he was a... If he, a Ask as if he was able to read Savage's mind. My kid, he Savage admitted. You have a daughter? Boy asked. She's six and I adopted her when she was a baby. Chloe's my sister's kid and when she and her husband died in an accident, I took Chloe in. Wow. I'm sorry about your sister and brother-in-law, but Chloe is lucky to have you, man. Savage shrugged. Thanks. And I'm the lucky one. She came into my life when I was in a dark place and she gave me purpose. She's a great kid. That makes sense. She seems to have a pretty awesome dad. Bowie's point of view. Bowie wasn't sure how the hell he had ended up in the sexy stranger's pickup agreeing to go for a, a few beers with him. He had been watching Savage for weeks now. Not that he'd admit to it. Boy had always been attracted to older men, and Savage was his top, right down to his salt and pepper beard that made him want to give it a tug. It had been a damn long time since he'd found anyone interesting enough to go out for a few beers with. When Savage first asked him out, he was sure he wasn't sure he had heard him correctly. He usually had a pretty good idea when a guy or woman, for that matter, was interested in him. But Savage didn't give him anything to go by. It was hard to get a read on the guy, and that made Bowie want him even more. Glasses. See if reading my glasses. I got my contacts in, y'all, so. It had been a damn long time since he had found anyone interesting going in, interesting enough to go out for a few beers with. When Savage first asked him, he wasn't sure he had heard him correctly. He usually had a pretty good idea when a guy or a woman, for that matter, was interested in him. But Savage didn't give him anything to go by. It was hard to get a read on the guy, and that made Boy want him even more. He always did like a challenge. Honestly, Dayton Man was kind of new to him. He wasn't lying when he told Savage that he hadn't come out to his family yet. It was one of the reasons why he jumped at the chance to be transferred to Huntsville from Texas when the opportunity arose. He hated that he was taking the coward's way out, but that was easier than admitting that he was by. He was even beginning to avoid his weekly calls home to his parents because he got sick of dodging their questions about if he had someone special in his life. Even if he had, he wouldn't be able to admit it because that would mean telling his parents who he was. You're awfully quiet, Savage said. You having second thoughts? About beer? Never. But we teased. Savage shot him a smirk that told him he wasn't buying him using humor to hide the question. You are always a smart ass, Savage asked. Most of the time, I use humor to mask what I'm really feeling. My therapist says it's a way for me to hide my true self because I'm afraid that if I if people get to really know me, they won't like who I am. Boy looked at Savage and almost made it through without busting up laughing. Savage looked about ready to pull to the side of the road and kick Boy's ass to the out of his pickup. Really, man? I'm not sure if you're kidding me or not. He shook his head at Boy and smiled. Your face, man, <laughs> said between feats of laughter. Yeah, yeah, laugh it up. Was there any truth in that? The, the sad fact was it was all true, but Bowie wouldn't admit that Savage on what could potentially be their first date. Nah, boy lied. I just like yanking people's change. chains. Savage looked at him as if he was trying to decide if he wanted to believe him or not. He seemed like a smart guy, and if he was telling the truth earlier, 
a little a literal rocket science scientist. Bowie worried that Savage would be able to see right through his facade, and that scared the hell out of him. I mean, I've been to a therapist, but there that was to work a few things out after I got back from active duty. Bowie admitted, giving the guy some truth might throw him off the scent. It would be best to get through the night together but without Savage finding out just how messed up he really was. That was another one of his secrets he didn't share with anyone. Well, besides his therapist. Yeah, happens to the best of us. Therefore, shoved my ass into therapy after I got shot down. Not that it helped much. But we knew just how a tragedy like that could affect a guy. He watched his best friend die after their Humvee was attacked. It should have been him who was lying on the side of the road bleeding out, but instead it was his best friend, Drew. They pulled into one of Huntsville's dive bars, famous for its customers being a little on the shady side. It was a perfect spot for two guys who didn't want to be seen out together to grab a few beers. No one got into anyone else's business in places like the Voodoo Lounge, and that was just the way they both seemed to want it. He knew that score. Savage didn't look like the type of guy who did long-term relationships, and that was fine with Bowie. He wasn't sure where he, he'd be tomorrow, and settling down with someone like Savage seemed like a pipe dream. He never let himself imagine his life with a man. Hell, he never imagined settling down with anyone if he was being completely honest. Savage parked the truck and cut the engine. Listen, man, if you change your mind about all this, I'd get it. Bowie smiled at Savage and reached across the center console to take his hand. You keep saying that, Savage, but I haven't changed my mind about that, about the beer or you. I'd like to hang out with you tonight. No pressure, no strings. You up for that? Savage nodded, and if Bowie wasn't mistaken, he could have sworn the big guy was blushing. I'd like that, he said. Savage grabbed his baseball cap from the back seat and covered his bald head, running his hand down his beard, and Bowie couldn't seem to take his eyes off the guy. He was hot as fuck, and Bowie was mesmerized by his every movement. He had been for weeks, following him around, watching him on base. Savage was big cut, big, but carried himself with confidence and grace. He had a persona that screamed alpha, and that alone turned Bowie completely the fuck on. He liked older men because the few he had, the few he had been with, usually insisted on being in charge in the bedroom. He wondered if Savage would be just as demanding, and the thought sent a shiver down his body. You good? Savage asked. Bowie shook his head and smiled. No, nah, but it's nothing a few beers won't fix, Bowie lied. He had a feeling it would take more than alcohol to write what he had been bothering him. In fact, Bowie had a sneaky feeling it would take at least a night of taking order orders from the sexy man sitting next to him to start feeling like himself again. Okay. Ooh, it's taking longer than I thought it was. I thought it was going to be a shorter read, Joe. You guys doing all right? And we got two more points of view. I'm reading Savage, and then I'm going to read the girl's name is Dallas. Savage felt ready to turn back around and leave just as soon as he saw his ex sitting at the bar with her girlfriends. Apparently, one of them was about to get hitched, and Dallas was there to help her celebrate. At least that was what he had gathered from the group of rowdy women. Shit, he grumbled and sat down next to Bowie. He looked down at the end of the bar to where Dallas mean mugged him and had the nerve to laugh. I'd say shit doesn't even begin to cover it, judging from the way that blonde is scowling at you, man. What did you do? Bowie asked. That really was a loaded question. It was more like what he didn't do that was the problem. She was the only woman that Savage dated more than just a few times. Hell, she was the only person he had any kind of relationship with in his entire adult life. And he fucked it completely up with her. He ghosted Dallas when he realized he was, wasn't going to be able to commit to her. She had never been enough for him. And how did he admit something like that to her? It was easier to just walk away from her and hope that Dallas would just forget about him. 
her angry scowl told him that he hadn't that hadn't happened yet. We dated about a year ago. Wow, boy whistled under his breath. So whatever you did to that woman must have been big if she hasn't forgiven you in a year. I didn't ask for forgiveness, and I'm not looking for it now. Well, I didn't have you pegged as the dating type, Boy said. Savage held up two fingers to the bartender, signaling that he wanted a couple of beers. The bar really didn't offer much in the way of choices, and he was one of the regulars on nights after he had a rough day at work. Didn't want to deal with his MC brothers asking him a million questions. At the Voodoo Lounge, he could just be himself, and no one really bothered him. The bartender brought them their beers and a bowl of pretzels that looked like they had been set out for a few weeks. Oh, God, another mental. Hey, Savage, the bartender said. Mike, start me a tab, he ordered. Sure thing, Mike agreed and nodded to Bowie. You new here, he asked. Yeah. Yeah, new to the area, really. I'm at Redstone Arsenal, Mike, grunt, Mike grunted and Bowie smiled. Well, women around these parts seem to burst into flames around guys in uniform. Just watch yourself in the with the piranhas at the end of the bar. One of the chicks is getting married, but they, but they seem to be about be out for a good time. Just fair warning, unless you're looking for something like that. Mike looked between Bowie and Savage as if trying to accept... Uh, access what was going on between the two of them and Savage growled. Thanks, Mike, he barked, all but dismissing the guy. Bowie laughed again, and he wondered what it was so funny, but he had a feeling he wouldn't like Bowie's answer, so he didn't bother asking. Are you always so grumbly? Bowie accused. No, Savage quickly defended, shooting him a look that probably told him he was lying. Oh, he held up his hands as if in defense. Okay, man, no need to bite my head off. If you want to go someplace else, we can. Hell, we can go back to my apartment. I have beer there. Bowie shot him a wolfish grin, Mike and Savage smile. I'm good here, Savage lied. He could feel Dallas's eyes boring into the back of his head and wasn't sure what the hell to do about her. Liar, Bowie challenged. That sexy blonde has you squirming in your seat. It's hot, really. The thought of you with her, it just, I just don't want to cause any trouble. Does she know? Know what? Savage asked, playing dumb. Bowie sighed. Does she know that you date guys? He whispered. No. Savage breathed. He sucked down half his beer and shot a look across the bar to where Dallas was still giving him the stink eye. You ghost her? You ghost her or something? Bowie teased and Savage winced. Fuck, man. Bowie spent, you didn't fucking ghost that hot woman sitting at the end of the bar. I did, and can you keep it down, man? Savage said, I'm pretty sure she can't hear me even over this god-awful honky-tonk music and the records our girlfriends are making. What did you do? Why did you do it? Because she would never be enough for me, Savage admitted. It was the truest thing he had said to Bowie, and he worried that made him sound like an ass. We had been on a few dates, and I really liked her. But then I realized that if I dated her, you know, just her, I'd be denying half of myself. You know what I mean? Bowie nodded like he understood exactly what Savage was talking about, and he realized that he had just assumed the guy was gay. You like women, too? Savage asked. Yep. In fact, I haven't been with many men. It was easier to deny that part of who I was while I was living so close to home. I didn't start exploring that side of my sexuality until I was stationed here. I had been on a few dates with men, but not a lot. So I do get what you're talking about, ma'am. Savage sat back in, in his bar stool and waved the bartender back over. We'll take two more and buy the ladies at the end of the bar around on me. 
He said, Mike nodded and walked back down to where the loud group of women sat. And when he announced that Savage wanted to buy them a round of drinks, they all squealed and cheered. Well, everyone except Dallas. She shot him a look that could stop most men dead in their tracks, but he wasn't most men. Dallas stood from her stool and started toward them, and Bowie cursed. Um, I'm pretty sure the shit is about to hit the fucking fan now, Savage, he said. Savage had a bad feeling that Bowie was right. He held his breath, second-guessing every decision he had made that day, right down to asking Bowie out and buying Dallas's friends a round of drinks. Yep, he was thoroughly fucked, and all he wanted to do was get the hell out of there. Savage stood and threw down a $100 bill, knowing that would cover his tab, and smiled at Bowie. That offer of a beer, offer to get a beer at your place still stand, Savage asked. Bowie smiled, not sure, but for the record, you're being a chicken. He looked across the bar to where Dallas was making her way across the crowded dance floor inside. Bowie was right, but he didn't give a fuck. Better to leave as a chicken than face his ex's wrath. Thanks, Brian. Have a good night. Bowie stood, took his hand, and they made their way to the front of the bar. Just as Savage stepped out of the doorway and into the night, he looked back to find Dallas watching him frozen to her spot with her mouth gaping wide open. Yep, she had gotten the message loud and clear. He was leaving the bar with Bowie and there was would be no backtracking now. There would be nothing he could do to erase the hatred and pain that he saw in her beautiful eyes. All right. All right, this should be quick. Dallas's point of view, so you guys get to know Dallas. Dallas St. James just about fell off her damn bar stool when Savage walked into the voodoo lounge with a handsome guy in fatigues. The two made quite a pair, and she wasn't the only female in the bar to, to notice them. Every woman in her group seemed to sit up and take notice of the new conquest as soon as they walked in, even the bride-to-be. She thought she'd never seen she'd never see Savage again, and that was just fine with her. They had dated for about a month, and then nothing. He seemed to vanish off the face of the earth. It was her fault, really. She never pushed to know more about him than his first name and the fact that he used to be in the Air Force. He had mentioned that he was a scientist, but Dallas worried that if she pushed for him to tell her more, he'd vote. It was ironic, really. He ended up changing her life forever and then ghosting her. Never to be heard from again, or so she thought. Dallas was determined to steer clear of Savage and whoever the guy was that came into the bar with him. But then he went too far and bought the bridal party a round of drinks. Was he trying to get her attention? If he was, it worked. By the time she got up her nerve, Savage and the guy got up to leave. But what she saw next, it couldn't have been right. The bar was crowded and she had to have seen the whole thing wrong because if she wasn't mistaken, they were holding hands when they left the bar. She tried to rejoin her friends, but she just wasn't in the mood to party after seeing Savage. He dredged up everything she had worked so hard to suppress. Her anger, her fears, and damn it, even her desires. How could she still want him like she did after the hell he put her through over the past year since he left? left her without a word. Sure, Savage didn't make her any pretty promises. She thought she meant more to him than just a fuck, but she was wrong. She had not only misjudged him, but so many other things too. Dallas bowed out. Dallas bowed out of the rest of the party. Rest of the night, not really in the mood for the trip strip club the girls were heading to next. All she could think about was getting back to her little apartment and shutting the world out until she could think straight again. Savage always seemed to have that effect on her, made her thoughts a little cloudy. Seeing him tonight just reminded her of the crazy, lust-filled month that they had that they spent together, and she needed to put those thoughts and images out of her head. There would be no more remembering the man who controlled her, bo her body, mind, and soul. Savage threw her away, and that was going to be the painful reminder she took home with her tonight. He didn't want her, and she didn't do well to, and she'd do well to remember that. 
Dallas climbed the two floors to her apartment and locked the door, letting herself in. Hello, she whispered. Hey, did you have fun? Her friend Eden poked her head around the corner and smiled. I'm assuming that since you're home so early that, that my answer is no, but I thought I'd be polite and ask. Dallas made a face and Eden softly cursed. You saw him, didn't you? She asked. Her friend always was able to make to pick up things. How the hell did you figure that out? Dallas grumbled. You make a face anytime his name is brought up. Listen, I've never met the guy, but you're going to have to get over the, this anger you're harboring towards him. If not for yourself, then for Greer, Eden said. Dallas sighed and nodded. Her friend was right. She owed it to both herself and her daughter to stop hating the man who had given her the greatest gift she had ever had. Whew, did anybody else catch on to that plot twist? I ran into him. I ran in, in, into him tonight at the Voodoo Lounge. Dallas admitted. Well, shit, that's not good. Did you talk to him? Eden asked. Dallas couldn't hear the question her friend was really asking her. Just go ahead and ask, Dallas said. Did you tell him about Greer? Eden dramatically whispered. Dallas shook her head. No, I didn't even get the chance to talk to him. He was sitting across the bar with some really good-looking guy, and by the time I tried to make it across the crowd to the dance floor, they bolted. Good, Eden said. You didn't. You don't owe him anything, Dallas. He used you and left you pregnant and alone. Hell, you didn't even know his no. Hell, you didn't even know if that fucker was alive or dead. Telling him about Greer would be a huge mistake. Dallas wondered if her friend was right. For months after Savage cut off contact with her, she worried that he had been in some horrific accident and was hurt or worse, dead. It was silly, really, but believing some made-up story, tragic story was so much easier than knowing the truth. He just walked away from her, and that realization stung like a son of a bitch. Eden was right about one thing. Savage used her and didn't even have the common decency to tell her it was over. He was a coward, and he showed his true colors tonight when he ran out of the bar again. Maybe you're right, Dallas said with a shrug. No, maybe, no maybe about it, girl. You've proven that you don't need the, his damn help with Greer. You're an awesome mom, and your daughter will get everything she needs from you and, well, me, her fabulous auntie. Her fabulous auntie. Dallas giggled. Thanks, fabulous auntie. We say aunt in the, in the South, y'all, in case you're wondering. It's not aunt. It's aunt. She teased. I needed to hear that tonight. It was just so strange, you know. You mean seeing him again? No, the way he left out of that bar. First, he took off like his pants were on fire, and then I could have sworn that he was holding hands with the hot guy he was with. What? Eden questioned. As if they were together on a date? Yeah, but that's crazy, right? Dallas says maybe she hadn't seen them correctly, or she just had just misread the situation. Well, that would explain why he ghosted you. Maybe he realized he liked being with guys. Are you implying that I turned him gay? Dallas mocked, upset, and Eden giggled. <laughs> that is one explanation, Eden joked. But Dallas found the whole topic less funny than her friend seemed to. Dallas had more at stake in all of this. She had more to lose, and there would be no way she'd take chances with her daughter's happiness, not even for the sexiest man she'd ever known. When Savage walked away from her, he didn't realize he was also leaving behind a little piece of himself that would remind Dallas every day of the time they had spent together. Her three-month-old daughter, Greer, was the spitting image of her father and the reason why she needed to work through her anger towards Savage. She owed her daughter at least that much. And that's all I'm reading tonight. Okay, so Savage Heat. Royal Bastards MC, Huntsville Chapter by K.L. Ramsey. It is free on KU or $2.99 to buy. Um, 
And as you can tell, it's worth it, ladies. So go get it. All righty. Tomorrow night. Who do I have tomorrow night? I know, right? <laughs> it's so good. All right. I think tomorrow night is um before the second before the second show by Thea Finn. Am I right, Nina? Yeah, before the second show by Thea Finn. And that is tomorrow night. Oh, gosh dang, it's kind of hot rock star on it, if you guys like rock stars. And then, thank you, Miss Fancy. And then, dang, I can't remember what's Thursday. Brian's Thursday. Brian Scott, the one that was just on here. I think his is Thursday. I think. Or maybe that's next week. That's next week. Who's Thursday? Well, fiddlesticks. I thought I had them all here. I don't even know. I don't even know. So... Tomorrow night we'll be back over on Facebook. So, um, dang, people blowing up my phone. <laughs> K, uh, KL Ramsey was watching, y'all. She just wanted to let you know. All righty. So, um, be here tomorrow night before the second show by Thea Finn and I will talk to you guys later be safe and happy reading everybody thank you